Bucks, go Bucks. Go Bucks, go Bucks. Go Bucks, go Bucks. First and go, we gotta tough it out. Get in the end zone and call a hot route. O line of beat, Mike Bang the street. And have Humphreys run right underneath. You know it's Bucks ball, we got the hardest D. Bring the pressure to the QB. You know it's routine, we got hard grease. Welcome to Tampa, welcome to Jerry. Go Bucks, go Bucks. Reppin' for my team. Go Bucks, go Bucks. You know we want the ring. Go Bucks, go Bucks. Welcome to the Bay. Go Bucks, go Bucks. Tune in with Buccaneer Blade. Everything that I've, I've asked for, you know, I'm extremely blessed to be here and I'm just ready to make the most of it. After a couple of plays, you know, it's just like playing football when you was younger. You know, football is still football no matter what stage you're on, and, um, you know, I'm just out here having fun. I think the key is, uh, you know, again, just showing the coaches, you know, that I can learn quick, uh, adjust on the fly, and then just making plays when I get the opportunity. Every year we found a couple guys in here that we didn't know about coming in. At the end of the weekend, you're just trying to finish up with the best 90-man roster you can have. Oh, we rolling, there we go. Going straight to it, no interruptions, that's what I'm talking about. Well, if we're live and we're rolling, there's only one thing to do. Welcome back to Buck and Blake Sports, everybody, with your host, Mr. Buccaneer Blake. Monday morning, you know, going over some Buck stuff, off-season stuff, you know. Like I said, it's pretty dry around this time of year, but you got to give the notes when you got notes. So, uh, well, as always, make sure to donate to James Winston Dream Forever Foundation. You can click on the link in the website, and, uh, my website at www.buckandblakesports.com. You can check me out at Buck and Blake Sports at IG, Buck and Blake at Twitter. Um, YouTube, Buck and Blake, Buccaneer Blake, and uh, Snapchat, Buck and, Buccaneer, Buck and Blake Sports as well. So, let's go into the top of the list. Is Gerald McCoy Hall of Fame worthy? I don't know. I said it's hard to say this early in the game. Um... Uh, his stats, like right, his sack total right now is 48. Um, his counterpart, Nadama Kasu, has uh, 51. And I think Sue has had more help at the uh, defensive end position than Gerald McCoy has had his entire career, besides the fact of Michael Bennett. And it was young Michael Bennett before he became, you know, the Super Bowl winning Michael Bennett. And, um,. I just think he's t- taking a lot of wear and tear, you know, on his body, his entire career. He's given, I don't doubt the man's heart and, and integrity and and giving 110%. What's up, Edward? I said, getting heart and intent, intent, intensity for this team every down, you know, getting hurt and still coming back playing, you know, with injuries and bicep and stuff like that. I mean, giving every player plays with, uh, plays hurt. Um, but I just never question the man's integrity, uh, whether on or off the field. He gives 110. percent So that's why I kind of always defend Ger- Gerald McCoy, because you don't get a lot of players who actually give a crap about the community and give a crap about uh, making sure um, 
for the fans are getting. He's playing for the fans and, and earning his paycheck every down, whether it's off season or uh, regular season. <clears throat> but like I said, he's at 48 right now. Um, Sue's at 51. And that's only the person I can really compare. And guess I don't know if you want to look at Aaron Donalds, which uh, he's a little younger than they are. Uh, he's had phenomenal help as well. Um, but you know, you know, in a four-three system, uh, the defensive tackle isn't really supposed to get sacks like that. It's made for the ends. That's what you got. You know, Michael Strahan with 121 sacks and stuff like that. You see, even Aaron Donald is only at 39 sacks right now for a career. I know. It's a, I think he's a little bit more on pace uh, to catch Gerald and, and the Dominican Sue. He's only been in the league since what 2014. If I'm not mistaken, but that man needs to get paid. And then Harry, he's got more help with Sue coming in there, and, and you still got uh, all your other players in the, in the upgraded defense. So I'm t it's just it's hard to measure up because sacks isn't always the one way you can only look at success of a player, and it just can't be. Oh, excuse me, because you can make plays without making the sack, or make you can make a play without making the tackle. You can disrupt the whole play, just somebody else makes the tackle, I guess, gets the glory. But unless you break down the play and look at stuff like that, you wouldn't understand. So, I mean, it's kind of hard to say right now. Is he ring of, ring of honor or worthy? Absolutely. But i like to see what, what what's going to happen these next couple of years with Daryl McCoy coming, you know. Hey, Kim. I say coming. Hi. Um... Gerald McCoy coming around, you know, 30 years old and coming around that time. So I'm interested to see how this goes with this whole new revamped defensive line again. And let's see how it goes. Like I said, the fire. Oh, for a fact, um, Aaron, Aaron Donald's only three years younger than McCoy. Like, I'm interested to see how this goes. So, uh, Winston. They say he has to prove that he's gotten better. I mean, they say that every year. I mean... I think we said this before. What's going on, Aaron? Um, I think they said this before. Uh, he just has to show it. And I, say, I think I said this last week that um, I'm not looking for real handouts anymore. I mean, I never have been looking for handouts, but I know uh, a lot of people want, you know, want to be talked about in, in, in a certain topic and stuff like that, but you haven't really earned to be in there. And for me, it's... Um, For me, it's got to earn the the respect that you that you're asking for. You got to go out there and and you just have to prove it, man. Like, you know, I'm not one of those gung ho guys that's gonna say the Bucks are gonna go win the Super Bowl every year either. But we kind of gotta. I mean, I I see the right steps moving in the direction, but we just gotta you know go out there and show it on the field and capitalize on opportunities that are given to us and and again like i said he can't really do everything on his own he can't run he can't throw and catch it i mean he can't pass block but it's not always all that some of the decision making is his own he likes to force balls in situation and give receivers a chance but sometimes the not doing anything is the right is the right answer and i guess sometimes you just got to realize that sometimes you just got to eat it live to fight another day <clears throat> punt the ball and then make the opposing offense drive the field besides giving them a prime field position and like i said again he's, he's still young taking over a terrible franchise when he first got here and like i said you feel like you got to do everything you got to be the man you got to be the voice you just got it you just got to play your part man do your job that, that i mean that's one thing i respect about the patriots they, they hold you accountable for your responsibility just do your job um uh, Ronald Jones, Rojo, um, so expected to get 15 to 20 touches uh, coming in the season. We'll see how it goes with preseason and all that. Um, Ronald Jones in college, they averaged 6.1 yards a carry, um, and they finished the season that that season, 2017 season, with a uh, 1,486 yards rushing, and uh, I think one receiving touchdowns and what uh, 10 plus uh, rushing touchdowns. He's pretty much the offense. Uh, hopefully we can get him more in a uh, um, pass catching situations and stuff like that. Get him matched up with mismatched linebackers with the speed he's got. He should beat a lot of people. He just what I feel. He just got to get the ball in the situation. Uh, um, 
and that's that comes with coaching and comes we you know with Winston's uh, field vision and, and and game time situation stuff like that. And I'm just interested to see how it goes. Um, but yeah, he's expected to get 15 to 20 carries. So we'll see how that goes with Peyton Barber and all that subbing in and out packages and stuff. You don't want to get too predictable on offense either. Like if you know if you put Ronald Jones in, you're only gonna throw passes to him and run the ball with him. You know, Peyton Barber really hasn't been asked to catch passes at the backfield. It kind of became the same thing with Charles Sims. When he knew he came in the game, he was on passing situation. He really wasn't going to take handoffs because he can't really find the holes in the running lanes. Granted, there wasn't much there, but you already know that. Um, Winston suspension. I know me and Kim talked about this a lot. It's kind of dragging on and um, and stuff like that. I, I don't know. It's an NFL investigation. It's not a. It's not a. Uh, it's not a state or or there's a, or state investigation or criminal investigation. Excuse me, that's the part I was looking for. Um, it's an NFL investigation at this point. Like I said before, and I've said many times, the girl's already said she's not going any further with it. Uh, she's not written any statements or anything like that. Um, she's pretty much done with it. So I don't know why this is still lingering on. <clears throat> I suspect that it'll become up in a topic when something um, something happens with us where we become in a headline or something good happens to us and then all of a sudden a decision will want to be made on whether you're going to suspend him or not. Who knows? This is like his first allegation, you know, since he's been in the league minus the college thing, which again, that was uh, washed out civilly and criminally. Um, Again, with that, you can you can read <laughs> her handwritten statement, and it's just it's it's messy. Um, but yeah, that's my prediction. With that, I think yeah, I think it'll come up when something positive happens for us, or when we start making headlines, and all of a sudden they want to make a final decision on us. When I, that's that's when I predict it's going to happen. Um, O.J. Howard's um, predicted to be a breakout season this year. He's having a you know awesome camp. And uh, they basically sound them at the human highlight reel. I mean, how Joey Howard is pretty athletic, you know, using double tight end sets. And a lot of people were, you know, nervous about signing Brake to, I think it was a four or five year extension. Um, Brake's older than Howard, you know, by the time Brake's contract will be up, or OJ Howard will be up. And, you know, I mean, maybe we can keep Bill both for a long time. It's good to have multiple players if we can afford them. And you run an offense that complements both players because one's really not a you know, run blocker, or, or we're going to help you out in, pa- in protection or pass protection. And one is um, <clears throat> Bray's pretty much an H back uh, coming out the backfield, making pass catcher. OJ Howard's kind of a run blocker, pass blocker, and pass catcher, but he just got to get his uh, fumbling situation under control. Um, and that's pretty much uh, I, Howard's right on track to where he needs to be. He doesn't need to come out and put up 12 touchdowns and stuff like that right out the gate moving the chains and stuff like that is really what helping your offense here and uh moving the ball and all that type of stuff um give me hold on a second i can hardly see it kim you and phil said something uh i need a person break down after <laughs> you silly man uh they haven't even interviewed winston they have been lingering too long would you think Would you have at least talked to him? Yeah. So that's that's what this, and, and that's a good point again, Kim. They haven't even interviewed Winston, or or have they, and just have not publicized it. Like this whole thing, like it, it's just dragging on entirely too long. You just keep dangling it over. It's like, oh, you got to be quicker. Oh, you got to be quicker than that. It's, it's just, you just keep doing that with this whole. Th- with, I mean, not even just Winston. Just every investigation is just messy. And it just drags on. I just think they wait until it's publicized on the TV. And then all of a sudden, oh, now we're working on this now. Oh, yeah, we're going to suspend in one game. Whatever it is, it's just I'm just tired of hearing about it and lingering. Just get it done, man. Just get it done. Um, oh, yeah. Our, um, O.J. Howard breaking out. Uh, he's on track. I think he's going to be fine. Just get his fumbling under, under control because he's always trying to get yak yards after catch. Um, Hargraves, he's embracing the slot corner position. Um, I, I mean, I saw a great play where he broke up uh, pretty much a routine catch with um, 
Well, Cameron Brake got his arm in there and punched it out. It was a pretty decent play. And I, like I said, I, I hope he embraces it. If he's not an outside corner in the league, he can worry his inside corner. I, I think if the pass rush gets to where it needs to be, I think all the corners and safeties and, and defensive backs are going to benefit from this no matter where they're at. You know, I think we got a decent group of guys um, that we've drafted up and that can do different things. Like I said, MJ Stewart could probably play safety and he can play nickel down in the box. He can be another Rondé Barber. He, we don't run cover two like that, but the boy is nice. Um, that's not just me, just because I'm I'm Tar Heel biased, but that's just what it is. What else you got for me, Kim? I like Hargraves. I'm not sure why people won't let him grow. Um, I think I've talked about this several times, Kim. And I think you have as well. You just say it different to me. You do it more the bully way. Um, <laughs> I've said this before, time and time again, we draft players high. Granted, they draft high, you want production. Fair enough, I understand. But we're not in the type of situation where we can draft players that are gonna that are gonna succeed sometimes right out the gate. And and what I'm and what I mean by that is we're not in a situation where you can just plug a guy in and he can just go do his job. No, like I said with Winston, you come bringing a crappy team, he feels like he has to do everything. He feels like he has to do all the stuff at one time and do and, and be everything at one time. The same thing with Hargraves. He really wasn't in a winning situation to begin with. Had no pass rush, neglected the pass rush. Uh, he brought in a corner to, 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 to cover. Uh, we have, we have the best, one of the best divisions, if not the best second best division in the league. Every every team in our division has been in the Super Bowl in this past past ten years. Besides us, um, they've had quarter, they've had franchise quarterbacks in this in our division uh, for seven plus years. Um, and if you can't get to the quarterback, no matter who you have at corner, you're gonna get sliced and diced. It's it, it's just gonna happen. And I think almost I think almost all the quarterbacks in our division has almost been league MVP, too, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong. One or two of them have. Um, I can't, like Cam has and, and what, Drew Brees and Matt Ryan, have they been league MVP? My point being is it doesn't matter who you have at corner. We had, we tried Darrell Revis, still didn't fix the defensive line. What, what difference does it make? But I, I'm going to get back on to what you're saying. You got to let people develop. Like like what you said, you got to put these players in winning situations. You can't just throw them in there to the wolves and they're like, yeah, we're immediately better because we got corner. I mean, yeah, we got a player in there and we hadn't fixed anything else. So, I mean, um, whatever. Like for example, like the Giants, you drafted Saquon Barkley, but what difference does it make if you're not gonna fix the O line? Granted, I was talking about this with another guy. Um, granted, they did fix the situation there. They picked up the Ramirez from uh, UTEP, Texas El Paso. I'm not sure. I mean, well, probably that's probably not it. But anyway, it was the guard, uh, one of the top guards, and then they picked up a Nate Soldier, and you so you fixed two linemen there and the running game. So now you can run the ball and protect your quarterback. That's 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 what you do. And same thing, we pick up corners, but you don't do anything with the defensive line. Anyway, I well, got on a whole nother topic there, but he's embracing the slot corner, looking good, playing it. I hope he plays that well uh, during the season. And a lot of that's going to be predicated on game time situations and, and pass rush ability and stuff like that. So that was a good point to bring up, Kim. Yeah, you got to let people develop. And I think he's getting more comfortable now. But the boy who's ready to break out, man, I'm trying to tell you, Chris Godwin, I told you, I told you, I put that draft analysis out. I picked it. We picked him. I said he doesn't stand. What I think my exact quote for Chris Godwin was the kid doesn't stand out and blow your mind away with the tape, but he does every he does a lot of the little things right. And I think that was my big point on he does a lot of the little things right. And that's what he does. He does a lot of little things right. Can, doesn't seem like he's that tall, but he gets up there and makes catches. Uh, can beat people on on the sideline on deep routes. He just does a bunch of little things right, and that's really all you need to do. So I hope Crowder can figure it out with all these receivers and, and get people in successful situations. Uh, and last but not least, Damar Dotson um, is subject to come back on time from the knee injury. Big homie coming back. Um, longest tenured Buccaneer on here, played a lot of games, hardly missed a lot of games. Um, uh, hopefully he comes back strong and what you got for me now, Ken, what about, what about DJ? Type it while I'm talking about Dotson so I can talk about it. 
D Jack, um, I mean, excuse me, Dotson coming back from injury. I've known Dotson since I've moved here. Um, when he was just, you know, I mean, he plays a basketball player. It's uh, that was a southern, southeastern or something like that. He was a basketball player, and you know, he's basically on the practice squad and worked his way up and moved his way into a start room. Was I think at one point he was what top ten tackle in the league. Um, but he's a decent player. Uh, like I said, it does nothing's going to stand out to you. He plays for the Bucks, and you know, it's, oh my goodness, is Lorenzo Mack on here? Oh boy, a legend. Um. Yeah, he's been under, you know been an underrated offensive lineman for this team for a long time. So you know, uh, I hope he finishes out here. You know, we got Kappa coming in, probably gonna play the tackle or guard or whatever that's gonna look like. Um, so we'll see how it goes. His protection. Who are we talking about, Ken? You said you said DJX, right? You talking about Deshaun Jackson, Ken? But then you said his protection. Um, well, that seems pretty good sometimes. The protection, if he gets beat, he'll he'll hold. I'd rather you hold than have your quarterback. Um, you you're talking about D J Deshaun Jackson, or you talking about Dotson? Oh, you talking about Winston? No protection, or you talking about Dotson? Even like having make like, not protecting. Oh, no production. I'm sorry, Kim. <laughs> no production. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I, I, let me finish on that some before I go to that. Hold that. Keep typing the stuff that you want me to talk on, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, yeah, Dotson. Come back healthy. We got Kappa playing, like I told on uh, Pete's show, uh, Sports Web. I think if we tank out the season and do pretty bad. I think Capo will come in and play, but I think Dotson will be pretty much play from now on unless Sweezy craps out and we move in the guard. So we'll see what happens with that. Deshaun Jackson production. Hmm. Where do I start with this, Cam? Well, as I said all season long, if you have no running game, then you have no, the safeties have no threat. Uh, I mean, have no worries of moving down in the box and trying to stop the run. Which means, Lorenzo, if you're here, you play college football, you have the two safeties up high. Now, they sit there high to keep the help the corners on the back end. Now, Deshaun Jackson's biggest thing is getting by people in one-on-one, -on -one, which he'll beat a lot of people in one-on-one. -on -one, but it makes no difference if he beats the inside guy and these two guys are here. So now you're trying to force a ball in these windows. So it happened a lot of season. Winston kept trying to force these balls over there in the windows. The safeties were getting over top because they know how fast Deshaun Jackson is. So now if you run the ball, you know, if we have success running the ball with Ronald Jones and um and Peyton Barber next season, now all of a sudden it looks like this. Now you have one guy at the top and he's got to pick which side to go to. You have a safety down in the box trying to protect against the run. And you can get Deshaun Jackson around here, or you can get somebody else. What's up, Tanner? Um you can get you you can get those one on ones with, with Mike Williams or whoever, uh Chris Godman or Adam Humphreys and all that type of stuff. Uh, you can get those, but a lot of that was bad protection, Kim, and lack of running game is why you can't get it. The deep ball comes from running game. Hold on, let me see that. What up, Josh? If you got something to add, go ahead and add it. That's so good when it doesn't have a sophomore slump. The only way <clears throat> you got the only way Godwin's gonna have a sophomore slump is if you don't give him the ball. If you don't find ways to get him the ball, if you don't find game plans to get him the ball that's the only way stuff like that's gonna happen um and that was a lot of dirt cutters thing and he knew that there was a lot of game time situations where he didn't produce he didn't come up with plays and stuff like that to do um to put us in winning situations you got to chris godwin sitting on the sideline um you still running on any drag routes to humphreys and stuff like that i'm not trying to crap on humphreys as humphreys has been very productive for this team and comes up with catches sometimes i didn't think he would come up with but we can do more and that just comes from coaching you just got to figure things out you got to find any way that you can gain an advantage on your opponent and that's one thing that bill belichick excels at and i think cutter needs to take a page from that book and figure out ways to do that whatever it's running whether it's throwing to the back just throwing to the back in just a slight spot where you know the defense is really weak at and just exploit it it's like in that gap 
between the outside linebacker and the inside linebacker and outside the ends. And that little gap, when you can get a running back at least a little room to run for five or six yards, and you just keep chipping away and chipping away. Everything doesn't have to be big chunks. I know everybody in the world, all they think about, oh, the deep ball and all that. Yeah, that, that, all that's nice and all that comes from having protection and game plan and, and, and taking advantage of situations and stuff like that. And that's really what it's all going to come down to. And that's what I mean about D. Jack's production. There was plays Winston missed him. I know I remember specifically it was a, um, a tunnel route underneath. Um, it was a slot uh, slot flex uh, slot flex. Uh, the inside receiver had did a um, corner route, and D. Jacks had a slant underneath. Had Winston put the ball in the right place, D. Jacks catches that ball and turns up field and outruns everybody to the end zone. And like I said, a lot of his protection, you don't have time to sit here and wait for Jackson to get separation. And the other part is we didn't have a running game to complement throwing the deep ball because the safeties are, there's no threat for the safeties to move from where they are to come down in the box and stop the run. Um, what do you think? Uh, it's hard to say right now. Come, okay. Well, hard to say. Everybody looks good in shorts and a helmet. Uh, you're not getting hit. You know, I really have to make reads in the running lane. Oh, what's going on? What's going on, everybody? Uh-oh, Tanner, you adding stuff? Uh, definitely good points. I feel like the calls are are so quick to the deep ball. Dink and dunk. And opens it up. That's pretty much Patriots. That's pretty much Patriots offense. It's dink and dunk, dink and dunk. That's it. And you method methodic methodically move the ball up the field. You don't need it all at one time. Um, that's it, man. Just take what the defense gives you, and that just and, and Tanner. That just comes from game planning. The simple is simple game planning. Simple game planning. Um, unless you guys got more questions and stuff, I'm gonna wrap this one up and edit it and post it so you guys can get at it. I uh, appreciate you guys coming in and, and throwing questions, Q&A, and stuff like that. I enjoy that. Again, uh, check out the website at www.buggingblakesports.com. Donate to Jameis Winston Dream Forever Foundation. He's doing great things with that. Um, all proceeds goes to him. Anything you donate to me all goes to uh, charity and stuff like that. Um, I don't think I really got much else to add. I feel like I do. Yeah, I'm not sure. Was Winston. Check out the website. Yeah, I think I'm good. And well, that's what we always do. You're the master of everything. What you do with your life, what you do with it, is entirely up to you. Thank you guys. God bless and uh, fire those cannons.